We're half an hour outside of Brisbane. I've got to say, I love Queensland architecture. Oh, this is a great example. Beautiful, elegant, elevated structures clad in weatherboard with that timber detailing. Beautiful. But what say if you found your dream location and you had a gorgeous house like that, but then your family outgrew it? What do you do? You can do what they did here. They moved it from one side to the other, then closed their eyes and imagined their ultimate rural retreat. And it looks something like this. <laughs> Well, Pete, welcome to Hampton Farm. And Joe, I think this is one of the longest homes we've yeah. ever featured on the show. But despite this extravagance, it uses quite a modest materials palette. Yeah, I mean, you've still got the weatherboard and the timber like you would have in a more traditional Queenslander, but then you throw in some red brick and it really is reflective of what the architecture was like in this area in the 70s. It's Australian modernism yeah. with a real emphasis on the horizontal. And with the entry, it's very controlled to this country castle yeah. because it teases one of the best country views you've ever seen. Just carrying this herringbone brickwork from public to private, just easing that entry. It's a lovely detail. So stepping down into the house and... Whoa, Pete, have a look at that. Wall to wall, this is 78 metres long. Now, that's almost four cricket pitches. How's that? Unbelievable. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, this isn't just for show. This is a really practical, functioning family home. They've got seven children and there's nine bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and every single room in this place is used. They love entertainment. Mm, the plan is effectively one room deep, so they all get cross ventilation and access to these extraordinary views. There's a, there's a simple calmness about these beautiful light-filled spaces. Now, obviously, this is a massive home with plenty of space for people when they want to have privacy, but one of the driving forces of the whole design were the areas where family and friends could come together. Mm like this room here, Pete. Yeah, it's the central, one of the central sitting rooms known as the art room. And you, people often forget the importance of a ceiling. Here's just a simple timber line ceiling, but they've carried the ceiling joists across the void and it just gives that added sense of depth. Now, you can do that in any home. Yeah, and you've got the warmth of black buck timber in both the joinery and the floor here. Now, you actually look at this room and you go, this is unbelievable. <laughs> but believe it or not, it's actually not the most impressive space in it. the house. Yeah, something better, <laughs> really? Because, Pete, <laughs> this is it. In this hero home, this is the signature space. Divided into three zones, up here, three steps up, the ceiling comes down, it's a more intimate space. This is what is called the winter sitting area. Although we're on the southern side, we still get winter sun because those high set louver windows are angled to get sun here during the middle of the year. And through here you have a dream kitchen, a butler's kitchen, an amazing dining room. I mean, this is elegance personified and it all leads to this brilliant alfresco area. Well, it's more like an outdoor living room, isn't it? Now, it's anchored by a fireplace, which is just one of five in the entire house, but it's the perfect way to anchor a space, whether it be internal or outside. Yeah. But you know what, Joe? This house is not just about great architecture, it's all about having fun. Yeah, well, let's go check out some of the cooler features. For the ultimate campfire sing-along, there's a fire pit for the grown-ups. And a fire pit for the kids as well. There is, of course, an in-ground trampoline. Even a tennis court. Whoa, good shot, Joe. You got your home gymnasium with a Mark Richards surfboard, the twin fin, talk about great design, just to keep your focus. And while Pete's in the gym, I seem to have found myself in the cellar. Temperature controlled, of course, and at a very pleasant 18 degrees. I mean, great. <laughs> a 20 metre pool and spa, and that's really warm. Outdoor pool room. And every home in the country comes with its own horses, stables. And equestrian arena. Nice. Now, before a brick was laid, the amount of excavation and levelling off that went onto this site was extraordinary to achieve this home. Yeah, 1,800 cubic metres of soil and mulch moved around. 
There's lots of benefits to it though. As you approach the house from the street, you can only see glimpses of the house. That is a benefit of this huge cut and fill that they have done here, apart from that gorgeous sandstone block wall. But they also planted 6,000 square metres of turf and landscaping. I mean, imagine when it grows, only the owners are going to know that this house is here. And the benefit is it doesn't matter what room you are in the house, mm. your eyes can look out onto spectacular landscaping and rest on green. But they have literally moved a mountain <laughs> to achieve this design. Well, in terms of fun factor, this house certainly has that covered. But, Joe, it's not a complicated home. No, but that is actually the beauty of this design. In its simplicity. Yeah. I'll tell you what we haven't done is salute the surveyors, the tradesmen and the builders. Uh, not to mention the architect, Sean Lockyer, <laughs> who had this vision. You betcha. <laughs> he got it so straight and so level over such a grand scale.